Culture started out as a small youth group band 15 years ago. Now they're one of the most popular Christian ministries in the world. Now, how would you describe Jesus culture? Is it is it a music? Is it a band? Is it a movement? Is it a conference? Is it a church? Like, what is Jesus culture? All of the above. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jesus culture is is a movement first and foremost. Um, it's a, a ministry. We we tend to reach out the most to youth and young adults, but at our events we have all ages, and we love that all ages come, you know. And um, and then it is the the music. We have a music label, and we have other artists that are part of that and worship leaders. And then we are now currently planting a church in Sacramento, California. So Jesus Culture is a church as well. Wow. So it's it's a lot of things all rolled into one. Yeah. Worship leaders Chris Kilala and Kim Walker Smith say the purpose of Jesus Culture is to awaken hearts to worship and demonstrate the love and power of God wherever they go. When people come to your concerts like today, what do you hope that they take away from that experience? Um, like Kim was saying, it's not we aren't just a band, we're a ministry, we're a movement. So we want people to come um, just expecting to encounter God's presence. And, and um, our heart is that people encounter God's presence and then take that back to their cities, their schools, their workplaces. So we never, we, we're a band, but we never really have, you know, concerts and all that stuff. It, we try to shy away from that. We're like, we just want people to come and worship and give themselves fully to God um, and, and hopefully take that back to where they live. And, and what made you personally decide to join Jesus Culture? Chris asked me to. <laughs> <laughs> now it was, uh, you know, just being a part of the worship uh, environment is basically what I want to do. I've been doing music my whole life, so uh, there's nothing like, you know, just playing worship and worshiping all the time and doing and using my talent to do it. So uh, I, I love it more than I've done anything else. I love it more than all the music stuff I've done. So when you think about Jesus culture being a movement. How have you seen God move for, you know, in your personal lives and also as a whole, like with your group and also just in the culture itself, how have you seen God move over the past several years? We have had the privilege to encounter God in a, in a really radical way, and we've seen a lot of really great things. Um, something that we do with our conferences is we we get young people and we train them on how to go out and to you know take Jesus into the streets, you know, just to love on people and and to pray for people and to pray for the sick. And and I do remember there's um, one that's always stuck out in my mind that was really special and really amazing. This little guy was probably like 12 years old and they'd gone out on the street and they found this person who was deaf and they prayed for this person. This person had been deaf since birth. And when they prayed for him, his ears opened up. And this man eventually gave his life to the Lord in, in that moment. It was this radical encounter. But as this little 12 year old boy is sharing this, He's crying and he says, and God used me. And he was so amazed that God would use him even as a 12 year old to do that. And I would say that's one of the most uh, special parts of, of what we do and how we get to see God moving is that he's moving in, in people's lives and becoming so real to them that it's, you know, God's not confined to a church building, but that he's He's with us and we he lives inside of us. And um, in worship, we've had lots of testimonies of people getting healed in worship with without anyone even, you know, laying hands on them. They're just encountering Jesus and getting set free. And it's really amazing, actually, to, to watch what, what God does in their lives, both young and old, you know. The band is famous for covering lesser known songs, instantly transforming them into praise and worship staples. covers for years because it was just we, we started out as a youth group and we were doing songs that were we were encountering the Lord through so we do a lot of other churches songs as well but we recently we've started writing a lot more in fact on our our newest album we have the most original songs and a lot of those come um, at least the hook and and stuff come from our own time of worship or a corporate time of worship we'll get a hook you know for a bridge or a chorus and then we'll take that back and write it and um, yeah I think a lot of our songs come from just that that personal time that that personal time of the Lord or a corporate setting where we've encountered the Lord through a, through a hook that we kept singing and we'll try to develop in that song later, but um, yeah. Now, do you have a personal favorite song? In all your years of being in the band, do you have a personal favorite? I'll have you each say your personal favorites, just get ready. <laughs> Mine is 
Well, it's probably How He Loves. It's a lot of people's favorite, but that's a song that I personally had an encounter with Jesus. Um, the first time I heard the song, someone else singing it, and um, that song means a lot to me, so it's probably my favorite for random reasons. I like, um, I think uh, I connect with One Thing Remains. Uh, we've just seen God do amazing things through that song, and it's not even a, it's not even an original song. My friend, some of our friends wrote it, and yeah, it's just always fun to see people sing "Your Love Never Fails, Never Gives Up" and and what that means to them. So, I like the original "Your Love Never Fails." <laughs> Oldie but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it just seems like everybody loves that song, and it's some sort of. Um, freedom that comes with it and it's almost like a refreshing it's like a refreshing kind of song for me. I like cheese no uh, uh, my favorite song is probably uh, your love never fails as well uh, it's, it's a lot of fun you know it's just it takes me back to the to the days where you know I just felt like we were the youth group bands that you know I still feel that way so yeah, there's a there's a song on our new record uh, called uh, "No Other Like You," and uh, that song really impacted me. Ac actually, after like we had been working on it for a while, and then r right before the recording, Chris kind of finished the lyrics on it, and uh, it really kind of just hits me. There's like a lyrical journey that it goes on, that uh, through the, like about, and it's about the cross and kind of what it says and what where the song lands really uh, speaks to me. It kind of tears me up every you know every time I listen to it. You guys talked about you started off as a youth group band. For, so for people who you know are younger, maybe looking at you guys and saying, man, how do they have so much fire? Like, what advice would you give to someone who really wants to experience God but doesn't really know like how to get there? We just, yeah, we were just, we were a youth group going after God. And I would say, um, you know, we just, we, we came to the point where at each of us individually, we had some encounter with the Lord that changed our life forever. And for me, it was during worship where I felt God's presence. And But it was after I had given Him everything in worship. And for at that time, I was 14, I lifted my hands. It might have been something small at the time, but for me, I'd never done it in worship and fully given myself to God. And I felt His love and His presence so strong in my life, and it changed me forever. So. Um, I always look back to that time or other times where I'd encountered the Lord, just when I gave Him everything or I took a step of freedom, um, or t took a step, there was freedom that came, and um, I think we all have those individual stories, but for me that's what it was. I'm going to add to that, not to despise the small beginnings, you know, that um, if you want more and you want to grow, you get as much of God as you're willing to contend for, and you really have to take ownership of your your relationship with Him and, and press in to get to know Him and and don't worry about things being small or starting somewhere because we all start somewhere and I remember um, every Friday night at about 9 p.m. till like midnight we had this um, prayer group that we did and Banning, the director of Jesus Culture, he, he had started this and we'd all get in this little room and sometimes there'd only be like maybe five of us in there and I remember leading worship for that with you know, sometimes all I had was someone playing a djembe, you know. I was really lucky when I got a guitar player, you know. And we would just be in there, you know, big or small, just praying and going after God and praying for revival, praying for God to do something amazing with us, you know. So those were special moments way back then. <laughs> yeah. And so what's next for Jesus Culture? You talked a little bit about you guys are planning a church right now. Yeah, we're we're uh, we're planning a church September 14th is the is the day we open in Sacramento, just outside Sacramento. But yeah, it's gonna be uh, crazy, and we don't really know what we're doing, but we're going for it. We know the Lord's called us to do it, and we're really really excited. So that is exciting. Yeah. And so when you're not practicing, you're not traveling, you're not helping plant your church right now. What do you guys do in your free time? I, mean, I know that you're you said you're about to have a baby. Yes, <laughs> I I have number two on the way in my. You know, I don't know if moms have free time, but my my time when I'm not leading worship is spent chasing my other baby around. Um, he is not yet a year old. He's nine months, and he's very active. So I chase him around, and and that's probably all I have time for outside of leading worship. Yeah. <laughs> We're all probably saying we all have kids. I, I have two kids, another one on the way, and it is true. It's like when... When we're not doing what we're doing, it's pretty full on. So, and we love it. It's crazy and it's awesome. But we all—that's what we do. <laughs>
how exactly like would you describe your music? It's somewhat eclectic. We all have so many different influences and genres that that we love and we all listen to growing up. And I'd say there's probably a ton of different influence. I mean, there's folk rock to you know indie pop to all ambient. There's all different kinds of that we all love and stuff. So we all kind of bring that to the table, I guess, when we go to to arrange an album. But uh, to say I don't know, I don't know, to, I don't know how to answer that. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. It, yeah. <laughs> If someone who has never heard of Jesus Culture before and they had an opportunity to listen to one song, what song should they listen to? Hey, um, it's funny, we have, we have so many people that tell us, that, that say they encounter the Lord through how He loves us and, and what that did for them. And um, so I would say listen to that song. It's an old song, it's like on our second album. And um, it just, it, it, we just hear so many testimonies of what God's done through that, so how He loves us. And it's about how God loves us, obviously, and, and, and so a lot of people actually never, you know, they don't realize, hey, God loves me this much, and I can actually just receive that and count the Lord through. So, I'd say listen to <laughs> For the CW Columbus, I'm Elisa Henry.